Let's take a minute to explore the mobile version of Google Classroom. Now, as a teacher, most of the time I am interacting with Google Classroom through my laptop. Um, when I'm setting things up, creating assignments, I just find it easier to have a full keyboard and do every, everything that I need. However, I do really appreciate the ability to access Google Classroom on my mobile device, whether it's my tablet or my phone, to post assignments, check in on student questions, respond to assignments, grade things. There's a lot of uh, benefits to having uh, Google Classroom on your mobile device. If you are working in a school that is one-to-one, -one, that has iPads, then you definitely want to be familiar with some of the differences, subtle differences, between the web version of Classroom and the mobile version. Let's take a quick look uh, at uh, the mobile version of Classroom. Here's our home screen. Looks pretty much identical to what you would experience on the web. Let me go ahead and uh, visit a course. Uh, this is our course stream page. Again, looks very, very similar. One subtle difference is that you will notice the icons to move between stream, classwork, and people will be located at the bottom of the page as compared with the top on the uh, web version. Let's head over to the classwork. Um, again, it looks very similar to what we'd expect on the web version. Um, one difference, you'll notice that your add button is over here, create, and so you're going to create your assignments, questions, and things. Um, but everything else works pretty much the same. We can drag these around if you want to reorder them, um, and then obviously click on assignments to actually see them. One important thing to be aware of if you are um, expecting your students to work with Google Classroom on their uh, iPads, it's not just the Google Classroom app that you're going to need. In addition to the Classroom app, you will need all of the corresponding Google Apps. So Google Sheets, Google Slides, Gmail, Jamboard, Google Docs, whatever tools you plan on using, you're going to need the mobile versions of those products as well. Opening an assignment on a mobile device is slightly different than uh, it is on a laptop. Typically on a laptop, you would see your attachments that teacher sent, you would click and it would open in Google Sheets. On a mobile device, it's a two-step process. First, we're going to touch the app, and it's going to open a preview. So this could be a spreadsheet like this one, could be a presentation, a document, whatever it is, and give you a preview. If you would like to actually edit and work with this file, you need to click the pop out button up in the top right corner. This will actually open that file in the corresponding application, in this case, Google Sheets. So you'll see it open Google Drive briefly, and then it will pop open in Google Sheets. And now I have full access uh, to engage with this activity. So it is a little bit more involved to use your iPad, uh, your phone, a couple extra steps. Just be aware of that, especially if you are in a BYOD environment. Uh, just be aware that there's a couple of additional steps your students will need to take in order to get into certain things. Um, there's lots of bonus features for Google Classroom, uh, the mobile version. I'm going to show you one bonus feature as a teacher. I'm going to head over to the People tab. And this will list all of my students in my course. But if you notice at the top right corner, you have this funky little uh, symbol up here. It's kind of a hidden secret. Uh, if I press that, this is the random student selector, which is pretty slick. Now, the idea is that you would pull this up on your phone as you're walking around your classroom. When you're calling on students, you press start and it gives you a student's name. Say, Mark, what do you think about this? If Mark is available, you call on him and then you go to the next student. Uh, Terry is absent, so I'll say absent. Anne's not paying attention, so we'll skip. And it actually keeps track how many times a student has been skipped or called on and will repeat that student until everyone else in the class has been selected. There's several other little bonus features that you get by using the um, mobile version of Google Classroom. That's one of them. Hopefully that's a helpful overview of the Google Classroom app. It's a great tool for helping you engage with your students.